Resistance Fall of Man is a first-person shooter released exclusively for the PlayStation 3 in 2006. Developed by Insomniac Games, it tells a what-if story where an alien race called the Chimera takes over the world after the end of the Second World War. You take on the role of the gruff Sergeant Hale, working with the British troops to destroy the Chimera threat in London. It was one of the first games to be released on the PS3, and at the time, everyone had nothing but good things to say about it. But time, as they say, is a cruel mistress, so the question becomes, how does it stand up almost 10 years down the track? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Let's just find out, shall we? So Resistance is a game that does a fair job of mixing story with shooting. Cinematics top and tail each of the 30 missions in the game, with narration by a woman named Rachel, that Hale saves from a Chimera internment camp early in the game. I'm sorry, Hale. Looks like you'll have to find your own way out. I'll be in touch. Frequency 77.6. The general plot is that you're out to destroy a series of towers which feed commands to the Chimera troops, with certain missions putting you alongside dozens of friendly allies or into vehicles to traverse large environments. Weapons range from carbine rifles and shotguns through to Chimera weaponry as well, alongside a few different grenade types. For such an early PS3 game, Resistance looks amazing. It's got great environments with lots of minute details and the sound and music is also top notch. The most important thing with console shooters is the frame rate, and Resistance manages to keep a steady frame rate almost the entire time. There are some rare moments when stuttering occurs, but by and large, this is a smooth ride. One thing the game does quite well is the atmosphere, from the larger scale battles and city streets with all manner of explosions, weapons and atmospheric sound effects, through to some of the more creepier areas inside Chimera bases. It takes a lot of cues from games like Half-Life 2, but it's still very eerie to behold. Chimera troops aren't the brightest bunch, but they are abundant. The major difference between them is the type of weapons they use and the damage they can dish out. On that note, the combat is alright for the most part, but this is a textbook example of bullet sponge type enemies. When you're surrounded by a dozen or so of your allies, you'll notice they struggle to take down a single enemy, leaving you to do all the work. The Chimera will often just run right up to you whilst being shot in the face, I might add, completely unfazed by gunfire, as they shoot their weapons back at you with near perfect aim. I mean, you know something is wrong when an enemy is killed in a single melee hit, but they can survive an entire magazine from a carbine rifle. One of the Chimera weapons is something called a bullseye, which is far from the most accurate weapon in the game, and yet in the hands of the Chimera, it becomes something of a sniper rifle as they're able to hit you from great distances, even when you're behind cover. To make it even more annoying, they'll rarely rush your position and just hang back in droves, firing you from a distance. One thing that doesn't help is that you're just not given enough ammo for the better weapons. I mean, I know they wanted to keep things balanced, but it's a fine line between balancing and just being frugal, and this is definitely the latter. Weapons like the Auger Rifle, which is a gun that fires through walls, or the Hailstorm, which shoots projectiles that bounce off walls, are awesome, but you just won't get that many opportunities to use them. I mean, you want to get your hands on guns like these and wreak some havoc, you know, similar to weapons like the Plasma Rifle in Doom or the Magnum in Half-Life. Instead, you just get a very limited ammo supply and no havoc. It's disappointing. Then you've got those great little spider-type enemies that everyone loves, and by everyone, I mean no one. You know the kind, the little crawling enemy types that come in abundance and jump at you from every direction the kind that no one in the history of gaming has ever enjoyed fighting. And guess what? You have to go through these types of segments with them probably a good half dozen or so times in the campaign, if not more. And later in the game, they throw them in with the standard enemy types just to make it even more difficult. This is a hard game. There's no doubt about it. It feels like a run and gun shooter, but it really isn't. You have to take your time and really make sure you're not exposed too much when firing at enemies. You've got a fixed health bar that pretty much disappears right before your eyes, so combat can be very tough at times. There's been instances when a group of enemies has come out of a doorway and I've just died a second later before I even knew what the hell happened. Now look, I'm all for hard games. I like getting my ass kicked as much as the next guy, as long as it's fair. I mean, like, look at this area. I'm in a huge room with knee-high cover, which is absolutely useless because I'm still exposed and being fired at. I'm bottlenecked into a single entryway whilst all the enemies are scattered throughout the room. It's just cheap. 
Now combine this kind of thing with an inconsistent checkpoint system, forcing you to replay 10 minute segments over and over because the game is too stingy to drop your lifeline. Now I have been told that playing the game in co-op is a lot easier, which makes sense, but that doesn't mean the game shouldn't be adjusted for single player. Just having the same amount of enemies, whether or not you're being helped by a second player, is total horse shit. I guess it's just one of those games you have to take your time and use, you know, some actual strategy. Anyway, in early 2004, Sony shut down all the multiplayer servers of Resistance, which means there's not really anything to do aside from playing the campaign. On a second playthrough, there are new hidden weapons to acquire, and you can also try playing it again on the highest difficulty, if you're a masochist. But I'm not sure if Resistance is really a must-play title for the console, I mean, considering there's a lot of other exclusives that I would consider mandatory. I mean, it's good at what it does, mostly, and it's dirt cheap. I picked up my copy for around 10 bucks, but it doesn't really do anything groundbreaking or earth-shattering, and the vast majority of combat areas are irritating and just borderline unfair at times. It's that familiar story of aliens taking over the world, and it isn't exactly going to cut the mustard either. I think the reason behind the game's initial success was just that most of the other launch titles were just really that bad. Anyway, over the next few weeks, I'm going to be taking a look at the second and third game in the series, and we'll see how the games have progressed over time, for better or for worse.